Now, what a panel we have this morning. Hardeep Singh Kohli joins us. The TV and radio presenter was only just evicted from the Big Brother house. Celebrity Big Brother on Friday night came to an end. Are you processing it now? It's the most bizarre set of sensations I've ever had to the extent that I've been asked, obviously, how do I feel? And my response has been, I have no idea. I genuinely don't know how I feel. Uh, nothing I can say can truly express the experience. But let's, put, let's make one thing clear. We were paid to go there. We're not bringing up kids having to get food from food banks. You know, we don't have a, a dying relative and we're not a social worker deciding whether to remove our children from a family. So limited sympathy. But would, yeah, no, but there may not be any sympathy at all. I mean, it's, it seemed like it was fun from the outside. Um, well, that's, I suppose that's where they cut it. Um, I mean, I did it this year. I've been asked to do it quite a few times. And the reason I did it this year is the original series, The Civilian, as uh, it's known, um, I was meant to work on that as a director because I started in production. Um, and I loved the idea of that. I loved, you know, 1984 is one of my favorite books. I think Orwell was a visionary and a genius. And I really like the social experiment of it. I think it lost its way slightly as it, it started reality TV, then it became reality TV, if you know what I mean. It started to mimic itself. Mm -hmm. It lost its way. People are very knowing now when they go in, yeah, aren't they? What was really interesting, it came to Channel 5, and as the youngest channel, there was a younger outlook and a fresher outlook, and I felt it was getting closer to the social experiment. Um, and, you know, I just I thought it'd be nice to be part of it. And also, I've been very critical of reality TV for dumbing down and being what I call schadenfreude television, which is watching people's lives disintegrate. You know, there's no humanity in that. So it came to a point where I thought, stop criticizing or maybe go and try and do, get involved in maybe trying to do but, something. But of course, one, one of the most controversial moments on, on this series, yeah. well, the most, yeah. we're about to see. And, and this is very much what reality TV specializes in. So that, just, I've just never seen look. this. This is the first so time this, I've seen this. is the first time you've seen well, it? I refuse okay. to hear about so, it. Now, so Roxanne's punch gate. Let's just have a look at this. So we do the punch gate apology first. I massively apologize to not just Ryan, to his family, his friends, his fans, every single person that watched that and completely and justifiably saw an overreaction to what wasn't a malicious act. So she'd come into the studio after, we, we haven't got the clip to show you, but where there was a shadow boxing moment. Yeah, I, I okay. saw, it. I saw yeah. them do it you every were there. day. I wasn't there when this happened. She made the accusation, the, every, because it, the incident was filmed, the accusation fell apart, as did her whole life, it seems. Um, listen, I found it very difficult because in the house, there are cabals set up. And, you know, and there's, you know, bless her, somebody like Sally is the shuttle diplomat whatever the opposite of diplomat is, moving between the cabals and just keeping the stew moving. And I thought, if it's as serious as it feels, we need an impartial person in the house just to try and mediate. So I thought, Do you know what? I don't need to know about it because you all know about it. And so that's why I ended up, at, I think, confronting um, rocks at some point about something because I didn't get involved in the nitty gritty yeah. mostly because well, people always try and set themselves up as the mediator because it's an easier position well, I think it? they set me up as a mediator because I was mostly shunned by my fellow <laughs> housemates. Well, let's have a look at one moment a bit, bit of tension here with Sally I think we can see this have we got any talc on powder he's got to look paler yeah, he looks too well we need any talc on him yo listen up that's a borderline racist thing to say I don't when do you know what, Lovely. honey? I'm a brown man. Lovely. So let's just be clear about that. Now, um, I've never seen that. It's first time I've seen that. Didn't well, know that was coming up. Well, were you fair on her? Because I didn't think she was... She wasn't making a racist comment. Okay, so, again, we all know it's edited. So earlier that day, uh, she said... I don't know if this was shown on the programme. Um, she said the idea was to, to... Nick was a Burns victim and they were going to wrap him in, in bandages. And she said, that thing you wear on your head, we can use that to wrap... Yeah, that was shown. Right. Yeah. Now... One can make an argument as to whether there was intent in that. A 67-year-old woman that's travelled four continents and performed to 3,000 people a night, as she constantly reminded us, um, and there's much about her that's fascinating and interesting and impressive. I reckon she, she knows what a turban is. I th you, know, you grew up in London in the 50s and 60s. You know what a turban is? So there's that, and I'm sort of trying to explain to her that's not a respectful thing to do. I don't go into the whole story, and maybe I should have, that when I was a child, I was chased down the street where people said, 
Where'd, why'd you hurt your head? Is that why it's wrapped up? To be called sore head walking mm. down the street. It so gets, it brought some of that back. And then that was the second or third time she'd mentioned the talc thing. Um, now, we talk about overreaction. I overreacted. Surprise, surprise, right? I, I think I should have handled it. Don't judge one's actions by those around you. Judge it by your own set of principles. I let that slip. And I, you know, but I didn't call her racist. I said it was borderline racist. And she got upset. Yeah. yeah, but the problem is you're in a house where people don't want stories that are more than a minute long and they don't want any sort of conversation. I mean, Ryan, bless him, I'm very fond of him, said four times, racism is irrelevant. I, I saw you trying to tell them a joke at one point about a social worker and you were unable to get their attention for more than eight seconds. I mean, it was really an interesting... <laughs> they, you, did you see that? Just, I, it was really a bizarre thing. I thought, yes, that is the modern world. You can't... The lead-in to the joke is boring. You know, everything's wrong with it. Well, I mean, look, Keris and I are friends. We laugh together, yeah, we tell yeah, stories. It's yeah. a Celtic thing we do. And, you know, for better or for worse, I just left Edinburgh, you know, playing at sold-out houses, you know, where people were listening to me for an hour. I was overrunning. I was doing quite well. And I get to the house, and I tell you what's great about it is, when I did my, like, the equivalent of A-level English in, in uh, Glasgow, the question was comedy is the gap between what we think we are and what we really are. And what was great for me about that experience is, listen, I can be a pompous so-and-so, and I think I know it all. And you know, I lead a terribly privileged life, even for a brown fella for Glasgow with an enlarged heart and type two diabetes, potentially. To go through that experience, and I had a go at the Instagram mm. generation, okay. you know, and the Instagram generation came back with some of the most articulate, um, thought through and erudite responses with great humanity and a want to engage. So 